never knew. Oh, crew do weather light. Is that what it is? Or is it, uh, well, welcome to the weather light crew. Crew weather light to welcome. <laughs> going forward and backwards here. We're going, we're looking back and going forward. Is that what it is? No? Anyone? God, I wish you guys could just <laughs> You're see You're on the your look. own, man. I wish you guys, <laughs> this one's on you, buddy. I wish this you guys could you. actually see the look in everyone's face here, because it's a whole lot of, like, Cringe. chin to the side, <laughs> eyebrows up. Can't even make eye contact. Can't make eye contact. <laughs> oh, it's rough. Even, it's rough. Can't even look at you right now. We're here yeah. with the gang, the Weatherlight crew. We got uh, Massless Eviction. He's Hello. back again. Felixian Rebirth. Three hey, times. Guys. Day of Janet. Hello. And Wrath Hello. of God. Hello. Oh, we have, where's the... Hey, hey, hey. Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? Somewhere else today. <laughs> so well, luckily we got a uh, we got the massless eviction back again. It's like he's a regular again. This is the third time. All it takes is a few people. Second. I'm trying like, to remember. All it takes no, is uh, it's second. second. Second one doesn't exist. Second, second one. <laughs> second time. Second time. Two yeah. time. Two time. Dallas Page. All right. Time so this I bet episode. Tyson knows what I'm talking about. I'm Dallas Damn. Page. Two time. <laughs> I did. I, yes, I did. <laughs> Our viewers don't know what that's about. This episode is brought to you by the Round Table. I thought I'd get that out of the way before Felix gets it in there. No, this episode is yeah, brought. It's, it's brought to you by the Round Table. Yeah. In other words, store.roundtabletavern.com for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. You got it. Or the Trading Post, right? That's true, too. Which, so we can get, continue change with our on brand confusion. Fun fact, if you Google Trading Post, the first thing that comes up is store.roundtabletavern.com. It's pretty good, actually. For all your Magic Gathering needs. You guys are cashed on geolocation. <laughs> bang, bang. Cool. This episode so. is a review of 2018, and looking forward to 2019, let's start off with our MTG... Resolutions. Resolutions. So start us off, Tom. No, you go first. No, you were the one that wanted to do this part of the of the show. So mine's you great. get to lead, I'm going last. lead the charge. No, I'm friend. going last. Lead the charge. Mine's mine's going to be different than everyone else's, so I'm going last. All right, well, start let's, us let's, off. Let's, let's let eviction go for it. <laughs> His goal is to cosplay. I want to play your favorite more magic. evil wizard. No, you're, you're going to cosplay. I want to. I want to wear more cloaks when I play Magic. If you say build a new EDH deck, I swear to God. No, but what I what I would like to I don't do mind that. He just buys them is, from us. is play with um, older cards. So for the most part, the decks I build are very. They're Modern. either they're either toolbox or they're you know they have a linear path that they go and that's what that's what they do. Or they're built around a mechanic that, that doesn't I work misread. the way you think it does. Yeah, that's also a good one. Read the card. <laughs> Um, but yeah, play with play with older janky cards and just make more fun based janky decks. So the answer is build new EDH decks. Sorry, no. build old EDH decks. Build that's old your new, EDH that's decks. Your right, right, right. Yeah, and spend less money on magic. No, we don't like that. <laughs> we're cutting that from the podcast. Stop yeah, opening no. packs. We're editing yeah. that out. Well, we'll see about that. Okay. You got a pack you're gonna open here soon. Well, just buy singles. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with your face, but people seem to hate it. There's a lot wrong with his face. What about you, Dave Janet? What's your uh, resolution? My MTG resolution for 2019 are business-related, not personal magic-related. Same. Who the thunk? Yep. Wow, you're exciting. Yeah. So what's what's your resolution? Um, are we allowed to talk about it? No, we're not going to talk about it yet, but there are some opportunities coming up that we are excited about and we will continue to grow the community as we have done very well over the last year um yeah and just keep expanding just keep on the path we're already on so cool tom yeah. what's yours go ahead well my mine is in the same veins as tyson and i don't know if i can say mine or not you can't uh my 2019 resolution is to make a pro tour Ooh, be so on you're that gonna grind. be grinding it hard. Yeah, a little bit. Don't you just sign up? No. He's <laughs> 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 just like <laughs> go on the website and be like, oh. Watsy just sends you're, out the newsletter. Playing. They're like, hey guys, so Allegiance what entails this signing up for the pro tour? We're having a potluck. <sighs> As someone that had the Kai Bude 1997 World Championship deck. <laughs> 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 that was the last time I cared about the Pro Tour. That's a, not even the Pro Tour. What was the World Championship? <laughs> you know, I'm actually really curious as to what your resolution is now, Tyson, because I'm, I wonder how complimentary or not complimentary it is to mine. <laughs> we can't talk about it, so yes. we'll continue. Yes. 
We can't talk about it right now. It's, it's on true. embargo. So. Um, so your question was, how do you go about? Yeah, how approach? do you go? What do you do? So, do you, is it so still you, DCI points based? No. Does that matter? No. So they're like, <laughs> you gotta go <laughs> lower your DCI. There are like three <laughs> different ways. Uh, you can either win a Pro Tour qualifier on Magic Online. Yeah, you're not gonna do that. You, I might. Okay. Uh, you can win a PBTQ, and then top four an RPTQ. Ooh. Those well, are that, paper tournaments. That model's going away. How's that changing? If they're going back to the old model of PTQs. Oh God. So yeah. you can just win a paper or. A online PTQ, or you can top eight a Grand Prix. And what's your most likely route of success? Magic Online. I yes. play very little paper Magic, and I don't have the time or the schedule that lets me travel for Magic, so Magic Online for sure. When you win Magic Online, do you then go to a paper tournament? Yeah. You'd make like, no, you would, it's a qualifier, so if you win the tournament online, you make the Pro Tour. Wow, they really... Uh... Now I finally get it. When the when the articles came out about is you know Magic Online and and paper and what's the future of paper and interesting, interesting. I wonder how many people are playing the same way you are, based on just the limitations of their lifestyles. Um, most I think most like prominent grinders outside of the SCG tour primarily play Magic Online. So that's that like that's speaking like completely unknowingly. Like I I actually don't know. So, but that, based based on like logistics and the competition, I think Magic Online's the best. So yeah. if you win the Pro Tour, you go on the Pro Tour, and you're, you're going on the Pro Tour. You win the if you win the Pro Tour qualifier, an online or paper Pro Tour qualifier, you qualify. For but when that you Pro go, Tour. does that mean like you can't GM here anymore? You can't be the general manager of Roundtable. You have to. You're now going to be like you've made it. So you no, absolutely gonna... not. I'll play one tournament. I'll go like no, I don't one two you... in draft, two one in whatever the other format is, and then two one in draft, and then I won't make day two, and then I'll be out. But Felix, <laughs> that negative well, goal is to make that's, it. I was going to say, that's like Tyson's hello. Aren't you aiming to be one of the top 32 paid Magic Gathering players? Um, I don't want to play Arena. That's next year's resolution. Oh, I guess I need to win a bunch. I, yeah, I guess I can just like win a pro. Why don't you want to right? play Arena? Because I, I don't see a point in it. Well, I see a point in it if you want to make the pro tour. <laughs> Why would I play Arena to try and make the pro tour? Well, I mean, we're obviously off topic, but just to close it off, I think... <laughs> That's obviously the way they're moving. His arena is a big part of their future. You guys never disagree on things. Yeah, like but they're continue. they're positioning arena to be an esport. It's not to yeah, directly. Yeah, but they want to make it Hearthstone. Just, they want they want just wait. You're gonna start seeing. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, as it stands right now, arena like the with the technology that they have in there and what's coming. Down, I don't think to say arena isn't gonna be a part of. Is like, it the a magic better at all Is just not even close. Then what's what's the catch on? Why are people suddenly arena? Because it's exciting and it looks cool and it's a more entertaining medium. It's, yeah, it's well yeah. done. It's entertaining. It's, it's, it's more entertaining to watch. To watch. It revives the, the land. Party so sorry, model strictly better was the correct term. Is it strictly more entertaining than regular Magic Online? Uh, oh, yeah. Also, not yeah. necessarily. No. Okay. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're if, not outside, okay. if, you're, oh, if you're talking oh, yeah, about right, standard, and if you want, if you want to watch standard, specifically just standard, that's it. The only thing you want to watch is best of one standard matches. Then arena's great. Whoa, whoa. Best of one is only just what they have right now. But if they're going to implement it into a full tournament, you better believe like best of threes are in there already. It's just not how they're ladder. But operates. we're talking about right now, right? Like if I want to tune into a magic stream on Twitch, they still have best of threes. It's just not ladder. Yeah, you can toggle it on and off. Yeah, right. But Twitch, like, I'll, let's say I want to watch a Twitch streamer and they're playing through their like their league, sure. whatever yeah. you call it. Yeah, those are all best of ones. Yeah. I'm just so saying, there's like if if arena's the way they're moving, I would fully expect to, if I was trying to be a Magic the Gathering professional player, that I would have to know arena, and that I would fully expect within the next two years, probably less, to have to be well versed in arena and to have what I need on arena ready to go to play and win, because they've already like if if you want to be a Magic the Gathering professional. That's going to envelop Arena. Arena is going to be where probably the majority of the prize pool is going to end up, I can imagine. And that's that's the route they're going to start. So we're on speculation to 2019, is what you're saying? <laughs> I would think that. Completely. I would think going forward, though, because like Felix already said, the grinders and even a lot of the pros will still play like the mocks and that on Magic Online. Um, 
so it's not hard. And if you were to play in a tournament anyways, Watsy would spot you the cards. You don't have to have like an account already set up. They'd, Most likely. They'd make something but for you. Get, but, like, and it's not a pro program that's hard to learn by any means either. But nope. most people will grind because of the current structure. Just watch that auto They'll tab. grind their tournament entries and, and all that kind of stuff on yeah. Moto for the moment. Yeah, I think we're, they'll, they'll have a lot of arena-centric tourneys that they'll run. Yeah, but that, that, their push right now is just bigger cash prizes and all that, and, and oh, like totally. filling filling a stadium. That's their with step one. People to watch here's it or ten million dollars distributed. But my my goal is not to become a professional Magic the Gathering player. But you if just you're on want the pro to tour, aren't you a professional? No, my goal. My pro goal. Tour. It doesn't matter. It's pro means <laughs> professional tour. So by its name itself, you'd be a professional <laughs> yeah, Magic. You win like, pro points and stuff. It's just a one but, and done. Professional uh, points. My my goal is not to like have my salary be made through Magic the Gathering. It's to play in, like, higher competition, higher stakes events. So what's your life goal, Felix? Sure. I don't want to be a Magic the <laughs> Gathering pro. Why not? Want to play. What's wrong with Magic the Gathering? Yeah, yeah, you Magic get one of those fat contracts. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. If I can become... Okay. If I can become a top 32 Magic the Gathering uh, pro, yeah. then maybe. Better but if I'm just, like, a, a, an average grinder, eh, not for me. All right, well, if I remove the if I remove the business one, the business thing, then I think <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think I have a resolution for personal. Maybe it's to foil out my Lucky Charms deck. That'd be kind of fun. So yeah. it is. It is just both of you are building new commander decks. <laughs> my, 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 my deck is built. It's it's, it's, it's built. It's to foil it out. So it's to shine it up, chrome it up. Would probably be a personal one because I don't want to go They questioned whether or not I knew what the resolutions were going to be. <laughs> I didn't have a resolution until this. Perhaps it was the chicken and the egg, which came first. So, um, moving, looking back, let's look back on 2018. Uh, we've got a nice comprehensive list of the in the entire product run of 2018. Do you want to go through them all and discuss the ups and downs, the failures? The well, we can list them and then stop at anyone that feels like worth discussing. I don't think they all merit. So, here's right. a, depth so do we, this isn't in order, this list here, but I think we can just go through and like list things off as we go. Oh, that's in order. Is it order? Oh, it is in yeah. order. Yeah, okay, never mind. Uh, Rivals of Ixalan, and the first thing in 2018. Oh, we're going to talk about the normal standard sets, too. No, it's everything. Just everything. Just Rivals is a good set. It improved the draft format when Ixalan was kind of stale. It's exciting now with Allegiance coming out shortly. Yeah. Masters 25. That was a garbage fire. Boom. Um, dual decks, Elves versus Inventors. The, Wait, the did we case. even have that? Yeah, on the same we line still have as all right dual now. decks. We have it in the display. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Oh, if Nothing. you would like a dual deck, Elves yeah. vs. Inventors, pick it up at store.roundtabletower.com. Is there anything even worth it in there to get yep. it? Dark Seal Plate. Oh, there you go. Challenger yeah. decks? Challenger decks are great. So it, Those it, were an interesting It thing should be noted as well, too, that dual deck Elves vs. Inventors is the end of the dual deck product. For now. Is that the one they had the <laughs> The for now the M19 land war that spiked in price? Uh, no, those were in uh, intro decks that okay. you, stores would hand out to new players. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Challenger decks I thought were kind of fun. They, they seem to have sold those. Challenger those decks were a great idea. It was a big hit. Yes. Because if they just, they were, like, I don't play standard. I played a bit on Magic Arena for a bit before I stopped playing. Um, Why did you stop playing Magic Arena? Time. <laughs> just time. I, I enjoy it. I still have it. We're I going back plug to it every once in a while, but I just, I'm not trying to be Challenger a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Challenger decks were everything that pre-constructed decks should have been up to that point. And that's yeah, that's how that. I viewed them. They seemed like something I could just buy and play F&M. Yep. No, I, I didn't think I would win, but I thought at least I'd have a deck that wasn't complete trash, like a dual deck. Positions any new player well in the meta. It's not obviously not maybe a 100% tune list. They were the four most popular decks at the time. It was great for Watsy because they were able to sell cards that were printed in the last two years that people had more or less maybe stopped buying from packs and all that. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, it was just it was just a win all around. They also just like offered product. very like clear and direct upgrade paths to making yep. your deck like tier one. Like you, there were the like six cards that you could swap from whichever deck, and it made the and it became yeah. people, almost the stock list. Yeah, and people could gripe a little bit here and there about like the EV of the products, like the individual <laughs> decks and all that. And oh, the people are, one was so good. Yeah, people, <laughs> and, and you're always go and you're always gonna get magic it. players will always find something to gripe right. about. But but from a playability standpoint, those four lists were all competitive at the time when the product released, and 
I don't think any of them necessarily dropped off after the deck released. I mean, nope. Mono Red was the boogeyman, but for a long time they so. were all pretty much playable. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so then we had. Uh, so you, oh, sorry, you think they'll do Commander or, or um, sorry Challenger decks I this think, year? Yeah, yeah, I think we'll keep think. getting these as, as right before rotation, which is fine. Perfect. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that model. Uh, then we had Dominaria, which I think was a very good set. Yep, Dominaria was great. It. And yeah. Richard Garfield came back to help design it, which is always nice. <laughs> you can tell. All right. Commander Anthology Volume 2. Tyson bought one, right? Three out of four. Yeah, I think you're the only one that bought one. Yeah, three out of four decks were good. Why they put that Kalemni deck in. Well, I mean, the same could be said as the first. They needed something for Anthology colors. One, right? They needed those colors yeah. more than anything. But for the rest of it, yeah, Brea. Uh, was it Brea and Atraxa? No, it was Atraxa. No, Atraxa desperately Atraxa. needed a reprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was another decent that was product. The, I was right on the cusp of buying Anthology 2. I bought one, uh, which was great. I still like it's still there. It's a nice looking box, it's a nice looking product to have on a shelf. Two, I just, I just couldn't do it. I feel like I had two or three of the decks already so i was just like Ugh. yeah but i mean in the in the safe for the people that missed it and didn't want to drop i think sealed attracts a product was about 125 yeah. maybe yeah. on the market so to be able to <clears throat> excuse me get four decks at roughly 70 to 75 bucks a piece well in the first one you got kalia yeah it's right? good no, which is the so same which is even was even worse yep. there's yeah. also a bunch of like reprints like foil reprints of old commanders, that's right, right? Yeah. yeah yeah getting nice. attracts yeah rune four, uh, oh yeah yeah no room was in the first one because Room was in the Duretti. The that's Duretti right. And the new deck. border on them as well, too. Yeah. Which some people were. Oh, yeah. That's, nice. But that's an anthology. Yeah, the legendary too. border on them as I well. I like that so. legendary border. I do, too. I guess. I don't like them. <laughs> You're not 100% so, convinced. Well, no, so sure, I, like them, I like sure. them on the commanders. Like, I like them on the legendary creatures. But, like, seeing Uborg with the legendary the portal and stuff, I'm just like, mm. Yeah, but it's black on black. It just fades kind of into well, the background. Well, I have a big so. problem with the art on Unlimited, or Ultimate Masters anyways. Oh, God, here we go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm all here here As a game designer. I'm a game designer. But no, I just, yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, the next one, which I'm actually most excited for, is Battle Bond. I really enjoyed Battle Bond. Battle Bond yeah, I can't dope. wait, because, so... I really liked Battle there's, Bond. There's a couple... I I don't do much Twitter, but I follow a bunch of people, obviously designers and, you know, Rosewater and all those guys. Um, and they've been... A few of them have talked about their excitement moving into 2019 um, with certain products, and one of them, I can't remember his name, it might have been Mark Rosewater, who said, I was excited for one thing in 2018 to be released this mm -hmm. year i have at least four that i'm really excited you hey uh, i saw them on reddit think, no it was no, it, it was, it was rosewater was it yeah it was my and, he, and he was excited for battle bond he didn't say but like battle bond i think had i know ver verhe talked about battle bond a lot and how excited he was about it and battle bond was was great yeah man and if they release more sets like that i'd really love to see another conspiracy type set without oh conspiracy God. cards yeah. wink wink nudge nudge you don't like conspiracy <laughs> cards nope <laughs> these, these products i think always run into a bit of a roadblock with just how they're kind of sandwiched in the lineup for releases in the year yeah, like you draft them two or three times and then that's it but something like this where every card can still see play in kind of an, an eternal format yeah, like EDH playability, good reprints. Like the lands were great. Like, like you well, guys, you guys had those uh, had that debate about um, the uh, unstable land. The only reason why people buy the packs is for the lands, <laughs> and then it was like, no, there's like one card that people like or want, or the squirrels. Yeah, like I nobody mean, nobody wants unstable them. products are always again. I mean, well, they had the tokens too, right? Yeah, nice but they, you buy uns you buy unsets for uh, Pimp the two unplayable cards in the pack. Buy for the token and for the basic land. Yes. But even with that said, you're guys. you're always going to have people like one of the people, Derek Pike, district mm -hmm. manager. Yeah. Uh, he likes squirrels, so you're always going to have those people that like the product because you see a lot of that tribal stuff um, that they can't do anywhere else, and the weird mechanics that they release for the limited environment, and even people as well too. House rules allow like you can build mm -hmm. your gnome deck if you want, yeah. or a cyborg deck or whatever. Or like use one as a commander. Yeah, like they're not in, sneak yeah they're not inherently broken cards, so they can see play down the road. But yes, I mean a product like that outside of the limited format is largely relegated to full art lands, any tokens people like, or the collector aspect of a specific yeah. tribe. Yeah, That's and I mean let's it. face it, the limited. I don't know if you guys had a chance to play it often, but the limited was fun. I mean we I, I didn't I, I drafted didn't play it any. I've all never the time. A, it, was, I, it was ridiculous. I don't even. 
I don't even have, like I don't even want to play a draft of an, no. Any it's you like, know I, I just, did, I, just at first don't. I was the same way until I saw the draft go off and everyone's running around giving no. each other high fives yeah, see, I, and I like find, throwing never, cards like, from three feet either. away and. How about yeah. that? Now, are yeah, you... the worst part was that two people opened Spike. So we had a draft. Two people opened Spike. Both of them had Jites. Um, they were the two players at 2 0, 3 0, going into the last round. Every, oh, every was, time they Bruce. cast Spike, Bruce, Bruce and Bruce He went and, and bought a Jite. Yeah. Just so he could play it. Yeah, because the, card, the card's <laughs> obnoxious. <laughs> sure. It was fun. <laughs> now, do you not? It was ridiculous. No, Massey as well, too. Like, you're the person around here that will buy packs to open to get cards for EDH decks and that is that one of the biggest turnoffs about this product is that you will open a pack with cards that are not no something so can... for me yeah it's a big reason why I won't buy it like I've never bought an unpack I I may like everyone's all like yeah maybe I, I'll just try and hit a foil land or something and see what happens but it's so far down on my list of things to spend money on it's just not for me now if if there is a large group of people that really enjoy it Go for it. Have fun. I'm not going to be at that table. You could open a foil island. Y you could. Totally. I could open <laughs> a foil card that I would actually use. You could open a foil or more. sword of Dungeons and Dragons. That's also true. Or That's a foil transforming. No, those were, I think, the those promos. Are the promo ones? Yeah, those are the promos. Yeah. Those are the coolest cards. All right, next yeah. next up. Well, uh, since Battlebomb was so hyped, I think the next one was kind of a beep. That's uh, Jace's spellbook, the signature spellbook. That one was popular. You oh. got it on, like, the first yeah, that. There's of... a phone. Yeah, we just have a phone. Phone in the office. Who's calling during during the day? Yeah, we'll just knows? ignore that call. Just mute it. So here so, we go. Um, I, think, I think it was hyped. Spellbook pretty well. was cool. Yeah. Was it cool? I mean, I, I, I would heard never. I would so never well. buy one myself, but I like the border and oh. I like all the new no, art. I, and I would play some of the. I would play probably those foil brainstorms. Over okay, like so a how lot many people are in the same boat as you, though? I mean, you said I would never buy one myself. We have so how, how many stores have. Piles of so now is the books. biggest problem with Spellbook is what was the MSRP? Twenty five dollars, I think. Thirty or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was about thirty. And yeah. most stores were selling them for way more. And now True. you see them everywhere because they were they weren't. It didn't seem like they were a very limited product. Like yeah, so Watsy had a pretty good print run of them. Let's stop. And I talk love the Spellbook. I'll I, if they bring out anybody else's Spellbook, I'll probably buy it. It's a nice it's a nice and item. The cards are cool. It's only thirty bucks. No one else I'll has like that many sweet cards though. But, but what are gifts on given and things like that? Like gifts they just a great card. no sure ban an EDH, but but they can apply it too. But other. they can. That's I what I'm saying. So, they can, yeah. You can put Fireball in Chandra spellbook. I mean, Garrick. Lame, if, they, right. if they do signature spellbook, Garrick. So I mean, it's mystical there's, tutor. Ooh, there's Rand, no link growth. No, but there's no less. I, I think there's the at least eight one. cards that are Garrick's. Whatever. Grook's Wake. Yeah. Grook's Wake. Like <laughs> so you can. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> you make the mono green planeswalker the black card. Is yeah. Right. What's in Tibolt's? Spellbook. Oh shit, give me Tibalt Spellbook, Gamble. Burning Inquiry, Goblin Lore, Gamble. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess what I'm saying is that, like, was it, did they print too many? Did they not make it premium enough? No, did I, they, think, I, I think they did exactly what they needed to. Um, they may be printed too many. Then why, yeah, But okay. at that point, was it a failure for them? Hard to say. Well, but they sold sound, a lot, so. It, it sounded like they sold a metric yeah. ton from, of them. From Wasby's, from Wasby's perspective, again, I think the product was reasonable. Uh, the MSRP for it, the way they did the random foil insert um, yeah. as well, too. I think that was completely fine. Um, I think the biggest issues you ran into was pushback from players, especially at the stores that were jacking it up. Yeah, um, There's been a real pullback on Watsy's side for like a premium product that stores can get in that are WPN store specific that allow a, us to make good returns on the investment. Yep. Um, so a lot of people, I think, saw this as an opportunity to try and take advantage of that, and I don't think players were convinced opening counterspell brainstorm in a thing that people were charging fifty bucks, sixty bucks. It was for. insane. Like we yeah. sold from from our side here, we it sold fairly well. Like I, yeah. I, we it was reasonably priced. Players that bought it were gonna collect it regardless, but as well too, like people were like, oh, I like the artwork of X card, so I'm gonna yeah. You know, the pick borders this up, are so. the borders are nice. Um, the foiling looks good on it. It's not from the fo foiling. It's a different foiling. Yep. Mm -hmm. Looks good. I think what's it? I, either, I think I got a brainstorm or a counter spell for the foil. Uh, yeah. yeah, those are great hits too. I mean, and that as well too. Like you can look at it as like this massive influx of foil brainstorms. Like oh, mm -hmm. it may be worth nothing, but you know, six months out from this, a year out from this, these are premium versions of these cards that are not yeah. 
in a pack. Right. You can't get any Not other way. So, anymore. you know, it gives a little life in the long term for yeah, this product I, as well. So. I'd be happy if they printed a few more. Yeah. All right. Well, I was shocked by that. Okay. <laughs> then we had uh, Global... Why, how did you feel about it? I, I didn't think it was... I don't know. I, I, I mean, but you then I'm, I'm kind of removed. I just look at the cabinet and see... Yeah, I see 20 copies. I go to stores and I see 20 copies in every store. We sold at least two-thirds, I would say, of our initial allotment. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think the cards are cool. I love the symbols. I love the the artwork. But this is again, it's it's the product that comes out. There's hype around it, and then it loses steam fairly quickly yeah, just because yeah. there's something else coming out. Too and that's really later. the juggle too, as an LGS is yeah. buying the right amount of product without yeah. there being a stagnant amount left yeah. over. I am well, jumping back up to uh, good investment to, long term to the unstable stuff. It's like that's the problem with the unstable stuff. You got to get enough of that in to meet the limited demand, and then you want one or two to sit there and sort of you know fill out the collection. Yeah, holes. they're slow growers over time. Like yeah. this, it's it's not going to go down in price. So. Yeah, the next one was the global series, uh, Jiang Yang Yu yeah, and maybe it was, Wu Yang Ling. Maybe it was good in China. I think it failed in North America. Is that, so I don't um, even know what this is. So, so it was it. basically a dual deck that yeah. was like filled with like Chinese like lore and like legends and all these like cool characters. What? And, like, really why don't we have but access to this? Standard we legal, have it. But we do. Um, only down there. It was right? really beautiful. All the cards really nice. Most of the cards were bad, and they were only legal in. Chinese standard. They were we legal in China yes. sta Chinese standard. In the display. Yes. Yeah, it's in the display. What the hell? <laughs> art was pretty good. I thought art some of the really cards art were was great on it. Yeah. Were cool, but again, I I've, like as someone who doesn't play standard, I found it really <laughs> weird that you already have this format that can be a little confusing with rotation every two years, and then you're introducing this product that's legal in this format, but only in one place of the region. Now, at this time, they were still doing worlds. What if someone had this insane deck using a card from that thing, and then they went to Worlds? Would he still be allowed, to, or he or she still be allowed to use that card in the Worlds? No, I would assume not. No, I'm I'm just still blown away at the fact that I didn't even heard of this until right the, now. The, <laughs> we have it in, in. Wow. The biggest thing about this product, I okay. think, is when they announced it, it was positioned to be a replacement for dual decks. Where I look at it is as more akin to Planeswalker decks that come out when a set releases. You have a signature kind of Planeswalker card. You build a powered down kind of simplified deck around it, mm -hmm. and it's more or less kind of targeted at a newer player. Yeah. However, with that said, branding it as Chinese specific lore, Chinese specific artwork, you miss, I think, a lot of the player base with something like that. It's more of a collector product, but it's it's it was still a unique product. It's, it's an interesting product. I hope they continue to do it. I would love to see some artwork for different regions around the world. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think that's a great idea yeah you yeah. can it's like you can almost make like real world planeswalkers yeah right like you can pull from well everybody like, wants history of all these different places yeah i think make, that's kind of cool. you can make like european the, the biggest thing about the product I, I will say that completely blanked on a second word there I'll, i was just saying <laughs> what would be amazing is to see them go and tap into other lores and do that yep. of course because i the biggest thing about the product too, and lore, but that I saw from players was that they wanted the token. There was a foil dog token that yeah. came in because the one character had like a puppy. The yeah. green planeswalker. The and then it the transformed on the back puppy. to like a larger version of a dog and people like really like that token. This stuff is EDH playable? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's uh, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's legal. Nobody plays. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not played. Like the cards just aren't that good. Oh, so they are very it. simplified. It's like you were paying three and a blue for a 3-3 three, three, flying yeah. creature that's and the it. planeswalkers they're very vanilla yeah. were very i think they were against six drops weren't they like following the planeswalker yeah, decks like yeah. and they just like planeswalkers already aren't played very much in edh yep. and these ones their ability is just for a planeswalker to be played in edh it needs a very powerful first turn ability for one either, of our either up or minus it needs to do something right away effective yeah that is good enough to warrant the casting cost otherwise there's instants and sorceries that can do the exact same thing for one of our players locally that has a super friend deck in EDH, he windmill slammed these two into his deck. Like they were playable in that deck. I mean, yeah, sure. On their own, Those likely are very not, but in, decks, a, so, in a thing right? with doubling like, season and all that. I mean, yeah. sure. Interesting. I'll make yeah. two. Any planeswalker that also immediately, more. if you have a doubling season on the table, is like normally. There's, yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah. I there's played against a planeswalker deck last night, and I hate playing against super friends deck. They drag. Games. Yes. Speaking oh. of dragging on, let's yes. get to the next yeah. product. Corset 2019. Um, Great. I swear they brought, yeah, they brought the corsets back. It's for not now. surprising. Good, good return to form, I think. They yeah. needed corsets. I mean, they Mero had a very good point when he published his article saying that we were running into issues designing sets when we had to include duress in every set. 
to account for future rotations on that, but to make a product like Corset again that is supposed to be stripped down and include a lot of that stuff, like Essence Scatters, Negates, Duress. The classics. And then you don't have to jam them into a, into a, a set, a supplemental yeah. set. Um, yeah. No, plus, plus it the made cards. Sense. It was great. And it, the reprints were great. It hit, so. it hit a lot of, I think, a lot of formats wish lists. You know, you got a lot of EDH playable stuff, a lot of EDH reprinted yeah, stuff. Yeah, Flip Bolas, man. Um, Flip Bolas, really good. A lot of the Elder Dragons people really liked. Yep. You know, yeah, I was really happy Victus, to see them come back. Um, Wall decks. The Wall deck, that's kind of fallen out of flavor. You don't hear much about them anymore. I never played against one. But it's like Seems everything, cool. though. Like, when Ixalan comes out, everybody builds a Merfolk deck. When Dinosaur. Corsac comes out, everybody builds yeah. their Dragon deck. It's, you know. Yeah. There's a guy up there that has ways. a Dinosaur deck. It's really good. Really good. Yeah. I thought the core sets were pretty cool. It's nice to see them back. I think I wonder if they're gonna do it for uh, 2019. They're gonna keep going with it. I opened a uh, promo crucible. Still sitting in its package. Yeah. Hey yo. Nice. I um, mean, Scapeshift is now an affordable card and will always be an affordable and card it's now from a very this point. Affordable deck. Yeah. But yeah, yeah but isn't what's what's its counter card? Not Valakit. counter card, but yeah, isn't Valakit? Didn't that go? Yeah, it's like it, up. it jumped Ryan, up in response to Scapeshift. But not Scapeshift. as high as Scapeshift. Shout out, now it's come back. Shout out to Ryan Bowes, who messaged me when Scapeshift got printed. He was like, yo, you should get Valakids. They're going to go up. And I was like, I, I don't know. Are they really? I feel like the cards are just going to stay cheap. Lo and behold, kid's a genius. Yes. And they went way up. But that's always the way it is in a modern deck. He's definitely yeah. not a genius, but he's just a smart guy. He's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's in law he's school right now. He's, he's a smart kid. He's a genius. One or, two, uh, one or two cards get crushed <laughs> on the replay. Lawyers are geniuses. This just in. Wow, that's just like, <laughs> no, I don't no. think I've ever heard that line. <laughs> him, him in particular. <laughs> All right, you're a smart guy. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, sorry. Or a genius. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not teasing you, Bose. We're just, uh, <laughs> just making fun of Felix. Uh, Commander 2018 that's came fine. out next. Uh, they're great. Right. They're fun. Mixed, they're fun. Mixed yeah, feelings. Decks were good. So, decks were good. I had a lot of fun with them. I'm I still hate, having fun with them. I hate when people just complain about missing out on reprints. The, so, you know, it's so one of the game. most. It's one of my like biggest pet peeves. Where it's like both all these decks are fun. They're like reasonably high power level. They're good out of the box. But people they have cool synergy. That... But everyone flames them because they don't reprint. Well, a big oh, part so of the flame was the, the increase in MSRP. Doesn't have many. Increase so in MSRP. That's the big thing you're missing. When Felix, they literally that... came out and said, "We're increasing the MSRP to account for the better reprints we'll be putting in them." Mm -hmm. That is one of the reasons why you're hearing so much more this this rotation because they said all this and then you got bear umbra <laughs> cards gas <laughs> totally totally gas. Go with the gas. you know what you could you could have an endless debate on what they should have could have put in another thing they shot themselves in the foot by identifying these decks that do specific things saying this jun deck is a landfall deck they shouldn't have done that saying uh esper is a top of deck matters deck they shouldn't have done that they just said here's an Esper deck, a John deck, and just left it fairly high level rather yeah. than putting these Even decks in enough. people's minds before they release any of the cards that these are the types of decks we're getting. Yeah. Because all that did was lead up to disappointment. Everyone was so excited for the John Landfall deck and literally they did such a poor job of their placement of landfall type cards in the deck. Like sure there were a couple. Wind Grace is a great powerful commander. Very powerful. I I built the deck, won a few games, didn't really like playing it anymore. Um, but insanely powerful. Just the deck out of the box was very lackluster when it's positioned as a landfall deck, and that's that's the only thing. I, the guys I play with, we all bought stock ones, and what we did is we play them stock. Then the next week we are allowed to switch out four cards, and you do that every week. I think we're up to like sixteen cards that we've switched in now, and that's all we do. And we put in janky cards to keep it fun, and they're not competitive whatsoever. But that's why I play them, and I found them great. The reprints. I don't need reprints personally, um, but I can understand. Well, how many are functional reprints compared to? It's reprints. not even that. It's just do not come out and say you are increasing the MSRP to include more exactly. powerful. Just powerful is is co Wizards code for expensive reprints. Yes, that just check check your your marketing communications. Yes. Like just keep expectations lower than I, I I get they they have their hype cycle and they want to hype products up. But that leads to massive disappointment when you don't deliver. And it's it's not even hard to deliver on no. reprints. Like, it's not a very difficult thing to do. It's especially not hard to when deliver on in... a commander product. Exactly, right? <laughs> like, sure, I think the new cards were fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, hold on. I will never forgive them for Entreat the Dead. Why? 
because when Blocks Addison... Blocks and have miracles. Yeah, because they said in right, right, Addison yeah, Restored, yeah. we do not pl- print miracles in black because oh, it's a flavor a fail. Bleed? Is this a color bleed? And then they printed it. I do not like that. Is this a color bleed? No. God damn it. This was no. just them. That's not a real thing, Tom. Damn it. <laughs> Jeez, Speaking of real. That's a great card, next though. Up, next Speaking up. of real, though, how about Guilds of Ravnica putting standard on the map? Real good, that set was. Oh, damn. That was. Set was gas. It's amazing and limited. It's amazing. <gasps> the Zephyr Mart's fun. Standard's great. <laughs> but there is no reprint. Who cares? They put What's excellent the functional cards. I can't remember which ones, yeah, but, but still, even the if it was got reprinted. Shocks got reprinted. That's a great thing. Ah. Like, that's a great thing. Yeah, no, that's oh, no, fantastic. No, but there was no reprints. But the, what, what did they reprint, Chris? Shocks. Oh, just shocks. Oh, that doesn't count. Shocks. They're just uh, the lands don't count. second lands most count. important you know what? freaking I'm, lands out I'm there. I'm a selfish guy, and Etrada, I wish, was better. Lazav, I wish it was do? a little bit better. Oh, I don't know. It's putting hit Lizov. counters on stuff. You oh no, you guys, uh, you guys played it wrong. Yeah, I played it wrong. Really? He cheated. Yeah, I cheated. It doesn't totally reanimate cheated. his own. And stuff. that's the old Lazav, anyways. Hold on, it, it only what? reanimates opponents' things. It only reanimates opponents. You things. were cheating that game. I found out last <laughs> night. I found out last night. Oh my and god! It killed everybody. my whole night. Um, but that's the old Lazav, anyways. The new Lazav is different. The new Lazav is your own graveyard. Well, but you have to pay. Yeah, right? That three three oh, no. four drop you were playing, you were playing incorrectly. It's not an easy four drop. I guess it's my fault too. I should have. I have to pay to reanimate RTSC. my great creature. I did try to challenge him on a uh, target the graveyard thing. I was trying to use the uh, ebony charm to wipe out a bunch of the creatures that he was going to turn Lazav into, but uh, I was overruled on that one. What was the question? He what? wanted so as as a creature was going to the graveyard, and Lazav was copying it when Lazav's triggers on the stack he wanted to exile the card from the graveyard so Lazov's thing doesn't go through it's the first ruling in it's the oracle the text ruling, yeah. saying that that can happen but Lazov will still take all characteristics of the card yes yeah because it's like the last known that's yeah. fine yeah um, last known. but then because what I was copying was a shieldred and I said but when shieldred's trigger goes off you can exile the card shielders trying to bring back yeah, into play. Can. And then we ended up and doing it the next That's turn. what he yeah. ended up doing. That was a fun game. So it was a fun even game. Even though it was played totally by massive Well, and then cheating, I, I played it last night <laughs> the correct way, and I still won. So, This is a reminder for all players that no matter what format you're playing, read don't, the take, card, read don't card, take your opponent at their word when they say it does this. Especially if you're not sure. I found out another rule last night, interestingly enough. And this, one, this one's pretty... It allows you to play spells. This one, I... You know what? I was I was certain I was right, and I was wrong. And so what was happening was, is I had a Mind Over Matter out. Um, <laughs> such a scum. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, do you, mind, do you know Mind Over Matter? You uh, played that with us. Yeah, I did. So uh. discard a card from your hand, yeah. tap or untap target, creature, land, or it's artifact. very disgusting. And so I was playing against Super Friends deck. Atraxa, super friends, and I said, just let me know when you're going to combat. And he had Teferi out, so he could untap four permanents. And he said, okay, I'm going into combat. I said, okay, I'm going to discard a card to tap down Atraxa in response to you going. And he was like, okay, um, but can't I, now that that's resolved, aren't I still in my main phase? No. And can do Teferi? And I said, no, because it's already gone. Apparently that's incorrect. No. Apparently once, once that resolution happens and someone actually does something, like someone has a response, it kicks him back into his main phase. It should not. It's only in, during the end step that doesn't happen. No, you're in the beginning of combat. Where did you step. read that ruling then? Cause that's it, cause, incorrect. Because Felix is level one wiki. judge here. That's wrong. That's what I thought, man. Okay. You're, if you move, if you it, can okay. show me, like, doc, because I was, I'm like, I can show man, you like, I the magic Mo- online client. I that's like the Modo. easiest way to do that's it. What you said. can set stops. I said, I played you can Modo, set stops and all I played Arena, cards. and none of them function that way, so I couldn't ever imagine that paper is any different. Yeah, that's but apparently, I read the, the most recent forum I could find about it outside of the rules that I read was 2014, and people were like, yeah, he's back in his, you're back in your main. No, no, you're in your beginning of combat. That's what I thought. You've already moved through. Listen, Decker, I'm coming for you. (laughs) Okay, man? It didn't didn't affect the game whatsoever, um, because what would have happened then is whoever runs out of additional, whoever runs out of the resources first, and I had so many cards in my hand, and we... And then it's when he's declaring who's attacking. Like, there's other ways to tap that creature down. I can't even. do it in declare attackers, no. Okay, no, well, whatever. Whatever, man. You, can't you heard me, Dagger? Come for no. you. The creature's tapped. Well, you <laughs> do they hold priority to declare? No, because when you... so When you declare the attack, they instantly... It goes main phase, beginning of combat, attackers, defenders, damage. And you can't tap things down. The first d- thing you do in attackers is declare your attackers. And you and can't do any response to that. Oh, no. I see. I see. You can't because. And then you declare your blockers and then pass priority. 
I'm a Texan. I'm a Texan. So the only way, so the only way I see, okay, so the only way to tap it down is to do it in your. That's why you say, like, base. you see in modern a lot, people go, like, cryptic, tap your creatures. Yeah. They do that in the beginning of combat. Yeah, they can't do it yeah. when Declare Attackers phase happens because, because when you Declare Attackers, you have priority to, to select yeah. who you're declaring. Active player has priority to yeah, attack with their no idiots way. and then they pass over. Yeah. That's what you yeah. get for listening to a cop. They're used to twisting the words around. I mean, Ooh. well, we, everyone looked it up. Like, he was. That's right, Decker. I'm coming He was for you. asking the question. He was just asking, like, aren't I, don't I still get my main phase? And I was like, no, like, I've played Moto. I've you played, caved. I've you played caved. Arena. No, we ended up looking. I didn't cave. I, I wasn't even going to look. I was like, I'm not looking because this isn't the way it happens. You don't go back in your main was phase. Was 20, I'm pretty sure Cryptic Command was around in 2014, wasn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah okay. Cool. 2014 have, is like after Innistrad. Yeah, cool. But they have a way to yeah. untap their creatures <laughs> in the main. That's the difference, yeah, right? All right, sorcery speed. Yeah. And that's the question. Can you still play sorceries? But in whatever. The of we can move no. on. No big deal. Where were big we? What, uh, super big we deal. were in so Commander we're, 18, we're, we're, great product. Yeah, Keep we're it still coming. on Guilds of Ravnica, but we also have Do Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition, which I think was Guilds an execution dope. fail. Mythic huge, Edition was lame, but the win. cards are dope. Next up. Set? Is it that yeah, set? pretty much. It was handled poorly. The cards. Are we already talked about this earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we've on the Hasbro we've store. covered this in other. So we've got the Spell Slinger starter kit. I don't know what that is. What is that? <laughs> I don't know what that these is were either. these are two products. They Do we came have out. those? Uh, no, we didn't. They're essentially the gift pack. Oh, uh, is it the two, octagon yeah, the, thing? thing? No, yeah. no, that's a different product. Is it? This is a plastic. <laughs> it is a clamshell product with five promos that are standard playable, technically, and then five promotional basic lands, and I think it has four booster packs this? in what it. What is it? What's the point of it? So it's a product, it's like a Pokemon, like product targeted <sighs> for like newer really, really, products. really, really well with yeah. these like gift box, cool promo That's things. Pokemon. What, this is, it's this easy is to write magic? that stuff off just because we don't have a community necessarily that would buy that, but in other markets, this stuff sells extremely well, so. Well, obviously, if they're going to keep doing it. Guilds of Ravnica guild kits. Those went really well. Those were mm -hmm. like, those, 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 those were cool. But who, so, is it just me or do they always bring these things out? There's always like the derelict packs or the derelict. Who plays them? The guild kits or like the 15 card booster packs for guild specifics? Oh. So you got 15 Boros cards. Oh, thought, or thought, like 15 is it cards? I thought, the, I thought the guild kits were those decks. The, or guild those decks. the decks. With the pins. Those are the decks. They have a pin. Uh, what was they the booster sticker. pack called? Because those pack? were very good. The 15, or is it like the. The seeded booster packs? No, it was like eight bucks or whatever. You got guild specific cards. No, that's that's coming in the next set. That's not out yet. We talked about that. That is something they're doing. No, that was that was definitely a real thing for guilds. <laughs> I, I oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 it was. yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, they were the uh, the cardboard. <laughs> yeah, the cardboard boxes, yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they were yeah, real. They were real. It was, real. <laughs> it was like just, if you could see I'm this, not it, going crazy. it was kind of like no. a uh, like an old <laughs> Western standoff. Everybody just kind of reached for their phones at the same time, but no one drew their phone. It was just and then Massey yeah. drew the phone because that's Massey. And actually, and to be honest as well too, I was first to go. I'm pretty sure I'm misremembering what the spell kit was. There was the gift box, which I think I described, and the spell singers kit was like the. Get four of your buddies together, mm. play this product out that of the box, the casual thing. thing yes. God, yeah, that exactly. would be the, the hexagon, hexagon thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hexagon thing yeah. <laughs> but there was a gift We've done a lot of well research too. coming yeah. into this. We're definitely not just reading well, off no, the list the gift, in Well, no, because the gift chat. pack is like, it's a Core 19 product. It's not like an actual release. It's just yeah. like we refurbished Core 19 booster packs yes. kind of thing. So. And then what's game, um, what's game Night Bundle? Guild kits were cool. The Guild kits were right back that. Guild kits were cool. They had some cool reprints in them. There's always the Rest in peace, Death Rite. Rest in peace, Death Rite Shaman. That's what? another deck for like, like a newer like, player. You think okay? It's, yeah, what just, I, it's what we recommend as like the instead of like a structured deck. Is it, it's not it's not modern playable. No, because there's Death Rite Shaman in the. But it's deck more right powerful now. than like a Planeswalker deck. But it's more powerful. Is it? A, it's for like a casual group. It's yeah. just for like kitchen table. Yeah. Like yeah. Or, if you, or if you want like the, the guild, you get a pin for your guild, yeah. so it's like a collector's thing to support your. Totally, group. I want to show whatever. Good, good source of reprints as well. You you say that, but tons of people. Yeah, where's your button, buddy? It's on your jacket, isn't it? I don't have one. <laughs> it's all of them. It's on, sure? his, it's on his. Uh, he's not in the Boros. No, I pull out. I pull out my like Pokemon book and flip it open to show all my gym badges. Oh my I have all the cons. God. I have all the guilds. We had uh, we had yeah. a couple people come in that were returning to Magic slash fairly new to it um, that picked up the guild kits and then since then uh, have gone on to purchase like budget EDH decks and all that kind of stuff. So right. it's just another entry level kind of like keep playing EDH, man. It's the newest, hottest format. Hell yeah! yeah it's game new night really bundles hot. was next. We had game night bundles. Is that in partnership with the YouTube channel? No. Thank God. Um, 
No, Game Night is the buddy product, we were saying. Yeah. Game, game yeah. Night's like their prepackaged decks. I want to call it a board game. But it was almost like an game, Explorers just... of Ixalan minus the Catan-type pieces Correct. in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just a bunch of pre-made decks that you're supposed to whip out to play with people who don't really play. Um, from the sound. Well, at least they're, at least cool. they're targeting the, uh, the another product for new players that we they've done. Hey, have not I done mean, much with you, you know we can complain Listen, all we want. For this game, no, for this game to survive, yeah. they need to target new audiences. Absolutely, like, and these period. products are very good for doing that. The yeah, overlap yeah, between like arena, <laughs> new players, Planeswalker decks, game night product, all that kind of stuff. I just like, can't believe is, how much product they release. Yeah. They no release an insane amount of product in 2018. Jesus, they did a good job, and I think overall, like barring some snafus with the. Hasbro store, online store. Oh, is that for the Mythic Edition? Um, well, it's for the Mythic Edition, for San Diego Comic-Con cards, but like they, anything related to Magic. They've already come out and said they're not distributing through that shop anymore. Yeah, they'll probably set up their own, like, Shopify or something. What are you talking about? They don't need to set up. They've already got shops in their distribution network that can sell the product for them. They're totally called would, LGSs. Whoever <laughs> wants to buy anything <laughs> online. Because they've never done anything to wreck that. You know what I really though. like? They should probably set up shop with Amazon and just ship directly to consumers. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a better way to do that. I mean, I have I Amazon yeah. Prime. Yeah. So. Next day. <laughs> got it. Same day. Same day. It feels yeah. like. At my feel office in Burlington, but same day. Actually? I've ordered that's sleeves. <laughs> And I get them the same day, and you can see the look on the guy's face, like, this guy's a loser. <laughs> it's like, thanks for my sleeves. <laughs> but no, I've been told I shouldn't You're be doing sleeves, same. You're buying sleeves, not from here? Um, some, when you guys, before you guys were carrying Eclipse sleeves, yes. But they're all the sleeves, well, I mean, your sleeves are the ones with all the anime uh, characters Yes, they have the well. busty yeah. anime, yes. thong-driven, right? Uh, lady girls. So, yeah. uh... <laughs> I, I, mean, I got a bunch of playmats. <laughs> Sorry, before we continue, I got a bunch of playmats from like a garage sale type thing. Oh, God. The guy was like purging his stuff, and I was like, "Oh, cool! There's like a goblin. Oh, there's like a Corset 2014 playmat. Oh, this one has like a Titan on it, and there was just like a stack of anime." And they were mats. all stuck together. <laughs> oh. And I was like, I'm no, just a little crazy. No, I'm gonna no, play no. with a different one of these every week no. and wait until Wash someone your play calls mat. me out on it. <laughs> Wash no. your play mats. Yeah. Yeah. And you I see played those... eight weeks of Magic with my anime girl play mats, and I've never touched them again. You see those threads on like <laughs> they're in Felix's. He, uh, he hasn't touched them. Yeah. <laughs> they're they, in Felix's garage sale this, this summer. Ultimate They're Masters. Framed on my wall. Ultimate <laughs> Masters is ultimate. We've talked about this our... so much. Already. Well, that's the end of the list here. Ultimate Masters. Uh, do we, do we listen even to podcasts. Okay. Listen to the last two podcasts. Nine, I mean, eight, long and short, it is super successful. Well, this is podcast Period. nine. Nothing bad. This is ten. This is podcast it? nine. This is nine. Listen to seven and eight. We talked <laughs> yeah, about it a the lot. ultimate, whatever the title was. Yeah. Ultimate, uh, ultimate. Ultimate news. An and ultimate then, look back. An ultimate. Or no, ultimate review. Yes. Ultimate review. Remember the little flash video? Ultimate. Ten second thoughts on UMA. Just to recap in this one. Total. Ooh. 10 seconds Massey, total. Yeah, 10 Give seconds. me some mo. Ah, kind of lame. But kind of cool at the same yeah. time. Cool. Great. Good way to go out. Love the uh, the, the set and the reprints. Hate the art. Classic. Hate, the, hate the graphics. Yeah, what about you? Continue. I said it was cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's our wrap up for 2018. That's all of the Majillion yeah. products. Ooh, last, thing well, for, last thing for our look back. Favorite magic moment. I was just gonna say, are there any big moments that kind of stand out to us? I mean, does anybody really follow like coverage for events in that? Uh, or? When I opened a foil force, it will best or, moment. Or Twitter feuds as well. That was the moment. Jerry Thompson boycotting the World Magic Cup. That was world like it was big for you, or big in the world of magic. You know what? Like I mean, a lot of the like <clears throat> big events in magic, like the most memorable stuff. For me, at least, are like the controversies. I feel kind of so. Bad there was that, me. and then there was the what's her name. The cosplayer who was harassed. Oh, Sprinkle. Yeah. Sprinkle, yeah. Oh, Sprinkle. The face of magic, yeah. So um, I can't even tell my biggest moment. Yeah, magic for just bad just on Jerry Thompson kind of for a second. I feel kind of bad for him because all the decisions that Wizards announced last month, those were obviously in the works and already being discussed and being finalized because obviously everything that Hasbro does, including Wizards, balance sheets, budgets, months money allocation, advance, months yeah. and months in advance, and that dude, like. Yeah, kudos to him for taking for doing what he did. <laughs> Just timing, man. Like <laughs> that stuff. Like it's I like hope you're playing. It's like you're playing a shooter game and you're holding that angle for like forty five seconds. And then as soon as you look the away, second you turn, yeah. you get shot. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> shotgun right to the face. Like I hope. <laughs> I hope he got what he needed out of doing that, and I hope he feels good that he. I think he made overall the right decision. Uh, but just knowing that. So what happened? So he sat out of the Pro Tour? Or World Championship? World, World Championship. Um, 
in protest of how they treat their pro players. And because how, like, he was like, hey, guys, for those of you that don't know, which is most of you, the World Magic Cup starts today. And everyone was like, huh, I only knew about this because of this tweet. <laughs> like, no one knew that it was happening. Yeah. So he's just like, yeah, they, they handled it poorly and they treat pro players poorly. So then what happened? How did he get shot after 45 seconds of suppression lane? No, because... He's, he stepped out of, like, the World Championship as, like, a protest. And then... He whatever, lost the a month, to a a month later. Yeah. Lost chance for like a ton of money to be a world champion, to like compete with all these different countries. It's like what the, did he achieve like though? Did he succeed? He may have at lost the, the No, league. at the end of the day, unfortunately, I, mean, really I can't do say anything. he achieved really anything well, because uh two months up to two months later, Wizards announced all this new stuff they're doing for their pro right, players. Right, but we don't know behind the scenes. Like it could have pushed the timeline ahead on announcing that stuff. Maybe it incentivized Maybe. them the to pay a bit more. Is there a lot of waves? If no one no one can know. Yeah. If no one can know, we have to assume that it didn't. I just, right. I wish... So in a vacuum, it was good for him, yes. I mean, we can give him kudos because he took a stand. He followed yeah, through on... He did what nobody else was going to do. Right. Even though everyone had and the same fine, complaints. You know? I wish maybe Wizards could have pulled him aside, got him to sign an NDA, like, and said homie. like, hey man, don't do this because look at all this stuff we're releasing. Unless they were just being on a spite, yeah. Well, I... I uh, maybe. All right. People are spiteful and they could have, but you know what? So poor guy. Tyson, um, do you have a uh, favorite moment? Look back for. 20 I mean, years? I don't play arena. Arena was a big hit, and uh, it was great for standard. That your biggest moment is, is that, that arena. That, is that you don't play arena? <laughs> Pretty much. Play arena. Arena was the product that they finally delivered and, and, okay. and, and said they were going to release People, after so long. People's biggest complaint about arena is the fifth card problem. Right. Um, and that's a problem, but at the same time, I don't think it's stopping anyone from playing. Sorry, the, fifth, the fifth card problem? So you can't have more than a set, and you can't dust the cards like you can in Hearthstone. Yeah. If you get extra copies, they go, go into, into your like... Vault. Yeah. That yeah. eventually will open up and give you a bunch of different stuff, mainly wild cards. Oh, I see. Um, wild cards are what let you, like, forge. And items. the other thing is, is, is when you get different art for a card, like a different set for the same card, which there's a couple just in standard... You create another bucket of four, so you can have two fours of those cards. It's it's kind of weird. They have some. Technically, they're still in beta, so give them give them a chance. Um, yeah, like Player Unknown Battlegrounds been beta for like four years. Yeah, well. beta beta is just the new. <laughs> we're we're not comfortable. We we still have bugs, but we want to release our game. And also DLC is on the way, so pay for that. Yeah, generally. I mean, speaking. Fortnite's still in early access, and, and they're it, in season seven of early access. And again, uh, hopefully, at some it's future, I can give you my moment, but I'm under NDA, so I can't actually give you my favorite moment. You guys know what it is. You should know what it is. I was I ranting do. and raving about it for the I half year. I do know year. what it is. Okay, tell 20, everyone. 2019. Well, my favorite moment is when oh, Tom told me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that, yeah, is that when Tom told me this thing, which I can talk about. No, my favorite <laughs> moment is. Uh, it's like a small thing, but I was playing in like a weekly here, and I borrowed someone's Jun deck, and I cast Bloodbraid Elf like five times, and I hit my called shot in Bloodbraid Elf like four times in a row, and it was nuts. So your favorite moment is a magic playing moment. Yeah, it's a, it's a humble brag. Yeah, well, I was like, <laughs> my point. I was playing against Richard. Richard Yam shout it to him, and he had two Grim Lava Mancers on the table, and I played Bloodbraid Elf, and before I flipped cards, I pointed at one of the Lava Mancers, and I said, I target that one with Maelstrom Pulse. And I flipped like land, land, maelstrom pulse. <laughs> That's like, this is great. And everyone Ruth popped off. Here. It was so fun. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, point, I pointed to the stand. I pointed to the the stands. Then I hit my dinger. <laughs> and then he got someone else to run for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> run. But yeah, my favorite moment was just like a like a random night of magic. That's really memorable. It's good. I mean, that's cool. I think that's what magic is all about. <laughs> Making memories. Making memories. Yeah, I played Community, a real terrible game friends. last night with Planeswalker deck, and it took like three hours. It was the worst. <laughs> well, that's that's uh that can be your favorite memory of 2019. That's that ending that game. Do we need to do we need to have a negative moment on this? Do we need to no, go around for like so. our worst moment no. of the year or our worst thing? No, because all my negative moments are things that you know. You know, what, I played a game of Moto in 2018. Like um, do we care? I actually ran out of time. What? I played a draft in Moto. Like guilds or like vintage. I can't. Cube? I can't even remember what. Built a what sick side. vintage cube deck. And I, I ran out of time because it was my first time playing in like years, and so I couldn't remember all the functionality, and so I was taking way too long to do everything, oh and I ended up running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna win the game. I was like, Classic. no, that, trying that to like get the right. That sounds about right. I feel bad for your opponent that was probably sitting on like. I was. I was talking. I was talking to him. 
I was talking to him and apologizing me like listen man it's been a long time just and he was he was super cool I think his name was like Cherry Girl sixty nine or something. <laughs> oh, okay. I actually don't know. He owns. So that, that, that's, 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 that's the screen you were toggling to, which took too much time. Yeah. So we we Shout had to Jessica Negri. <laughs> What's up, girl? <laughs> Hit us up. DM us. <laughs> I'll slip and slide into your DMs. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, Are we even gonna bother looking forward to the three? Potential products for 2019 so far. We've got uh, Ravnica Allegiance, Two Allegiance Guild Kits, and unnamed Ravnica set. Actually, that unnamed. I am super excited about cool. all these things. Right? I'm very excited for Ravnica 2 through 4, as I'm also very excited for Ravnica 5 and 6. Yes. We can... <laughs> Hopefully don't... Uh... I'm excited for Commander 2019. And every... Um, and all of their powerful reprints. And every... What... What what are the what, what are the battle bonds that's called? I'm losing the oh word. Oh my god, the uh, supplemental, supplemental products. Oh, me too. I'm Love very me excited. Some supplemental products. I'm very excited for next summer or next fall, whenever they do it, when they release. Um, and when you're pro? When, no, when they release like uh, modern champions edition, which is modern masters. <laughs> <of the> street, <laughs> well, well, I know the biggest the biggest theory is that they're going to release a sh straight to modern set. Do you, what's, I don't think that. What's, ever I don't happen. personally think it's gonna happen either. A straight to modern set. Yeah, so that would be amazing. bypass the standard straight to modern. Oh my god, Sounds that'd be. Incredible. I think it's a bold prediction. It's a bold. It is, but a lot of people are making it. It's to me, it's like okay, modern's supposed to just be extended 2.0, right? Like, yeah, what what 1.5 was. That would be amazing. To see well, everybody's speculating so heavily on like a new format coming out with Arena, so. which I think has more. Bearings to it. What do you think that so format's going to be? The be? New frontier. Whatever starts with Exelon. I mean, they want to call it. We've well, said no, I've, I've mentioned this before, but I find that the like straight to specific set cards it's that no. it's gone down. Traditionally come out of the traditionally come out of supplemental products are like on average just bad for the formats. I, think and I use Legacy as an example because there's a bunch of cards. And I think Kaladesh would be a mistake to include in new. Well, that's such an energy is set, right? Yeah. And that's so it was in Arena, but it's not anymore. Yeah. So you start now with really things long, right All right, open your pack. I don't want Calvin. Open this pack. No, okay. Pack one, pick one. It's a fair. So we got a uh, Dominaria pack. No, because he, he bought a bunch of other packs before the show <laughs> and didn't want to spend more on the pack for the show. Oh, oh no. would you? So oh, this is a phone is back. This again. is a foil to fairy, hopefully. Okay. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Eviscerate first book. Eviscerate. Eviscerate's good card. Yeah, but what about. Oh, wait. In Bolus Clutches is nuts, too. What about Grand Warlord Rada? Eviscerata. <laughs> I think I still just take. No, she's gonna she's gonna be nuts. I think with uh, Gruel coming out. Pack one, pick one. Oh, you for take Dominary her for draft. Oh no, <laughs> I'm looking forward to. You want Sapperling migration? Yeah. So I mean, that's a card. Good. That's a good I mean, card. Too. I love this card. You there love Sapperlings. You're the guy that makes the Sapperlings. There are two stuff. cards in this pack before you take. Rada. Oh, geez, foil to fairy. No. <laughs> no. Pass. I got a Sapperling token and a forest. You got a Sapperling token to go along with your Sapperling migration. Damn That's right. True. That's value. All right. That was our looking forward and uh, really sorry. Look forward look, sorry. Anything. That was our look oh, back. Really really know look back. Next up, so we're going to look forward into the future. If you are looking for Magic the Gathering cards and or supplements, you can go store.roundtabletavern.com. Speak to our man Tyson Janet. The Dave Janet will take care of your needs. And don't worry. It's not your computer. The site is that slow. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> and if you really need it, we can order you anime playmats.